I went back in time and brought my man, Jermaine Hopkins. Yes. You there, brother? What's going yeah, on, man? Yeah, what's good, man? How y'all doing? What's going on? All right, all right. We gotta what's get, going on? We got to get his man a round of ovation before, he, before we start this thing off, man. Yeah. We went to the red carpet here. Hey, yeah. man, that's all. Man, God is good all the time, man. It's a, it's a blessing. Yes, he is. Right. Yes, he is. So definitely, man. Um, so, Mr. Hopkins, this is T-Max here in Virginia. First off, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored, man. You definitely, know? definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, first off, first off, speaking on behalf of the guillotine, man, we have to say what an honor and a privilege it is uh, for you to join us. Um, Hell yeah. You, There's a legend you, right here we got. Yes, I mean, um, you were one I of the. Me. Yes, yes, no. you were one of. Yeah, yeah, you were one of the main mainstays, you know, uh, for the nineties, and a lot of you know there are people who act, and then there are people who get in movies. You were an actor who was in movies that were classics. I mean, let me just run the short list down. I mean, Lean on Me. You know, with Morgan Freeman. I mean, Strat with Bo King Woodbine. You know, I, I mean. Hell yeah. You know, Got I, I mean, Beach. Yes, Fat Beach. I mean, of course, How to Be a Player with Bill Bellamy. Of course, your time went away in Brothers. I mean. I, it's like the I list mean, goes your, on and on. Yes, your your credentials are unbelievable. Um, I mean, for, for our audience, I mean. Please tell us about yourself. How did you get started? You know, in terms of you know your history. Um, uh, I, I was just a little fat kid from Newark, New Jersey. Um, uh, <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, always had problems in school. You know, well, my problem in school, I was a class clown. You know, I went, hurried up and got my work out the way so I could play. You know, uh, and uh. Messed around and my mother read in the paper about they was having an open call, but they was making a movie out of the you know behind Joe Clark, right? You know and all uh, his, his his things that he had going on in Patterson, and they had an open call audition in New York. It was looking for some real street kids, never been to acting school, and you know had problems in school, right? So she, like, right. I, I fit the description, so they grabbed me by my collar and took me over there. I figured I'd meet some girls or something like that while I'm in line. Hey, you know, I'm from Newark. Let's, a trip to go to New York? Like, yeah, come on, let's go. Hell yeah, let's, you know, yeah. all the time. I'm thinking, <laughs> like, my, this play, man, we had the theater over here, man. This ain't for no movie. Ain't no cameras out here, you know, thinking I know it all. And uh, the writer came up to me and asked me what would I do if I was in the hallway. And I was supposed to be in class, and I gave him the same thing that was on the on the script. And I never had uh, never seen the script. Right. You know, so uh, they wrote Sam's on a piece of paper and sent me inside, and uh, the rest was history. I did seven auditions and uh, cried my ass off, and uh, <laughs> they said I was. So I was like, they, so like that part was for you. Like you didn't try out for any other part. That part was just for you, right then and there. Boom. Right. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember reading for any other uh, roles other than Sam's. And Sam's, we all know, was a crackhead. So they was really looking for a more, you know, slender, you know, more slender guy. But you know, I guess I beat the slender guy out. You know. Hmm. I don't know. Well. I have, to, well, one, I have to say one thing, since y'all are on the Sam. You know, when you look at Lean On Me and you read the treatment, the synopsis, everything, they they don't say that Sam's was a main character, but you made it a main character. If anybody yeah, saw yeah. Lean On Me, they remember, you know, a, a few parts. I know I remember a few parts without seeing it, but I watch it all the time, so I'm just saying. But you smoke crack, don't you, day, boy? Huh? Ah, <laughs> you're killing your brain, you're killing your brain. I remember you in the exact role 
I remember you being caught up in the bathroom in the hallway telling that lady suck your dick. I remember you you made your part an iconic part and it, it became legendary in and of itself. How does it feel to have gone to your first audition and becoming a legendary character in by yourself, let alone standing with Morgan Freeman in, in that movie? Uh, I mean, it, you know, when it was all happening, you know, you you don't realize what you're doing, what's, what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you don't realize what, uh, you know, what's what's actually happening, what you making history and, you know, the part of history you, you know, you really a part of, you actually making at the time. You know, and, and me never, never going to acting school and, uh, 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 not doing anything other than school plays, you know. I'm like, man, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really pulling one over on these guys. You know what I'm saying? They, they think I can act. They shit, I got this fool. I got like I do the most of the school and shit. So you know, I said, uh, well, let's let's rock with it. And uh, sitting back watching myself, man, it was it was it 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 was. It was a, I never got to see it in the school plays. I just hear everybody talking about. You know how much of a good job I did. Elementary school plays, like, I only got to be in the play because the main character was out, you know, and I had to fill in because I was always being punished for something. So it was like, well, you can play in the play, but, you know, you you, you on punishment right now because, you know, you did X, Y, and Z. I was always doing something. But, you know, after I would learn the lines, and I only learned my lines by learning everybody else's lines. And, you know, uh... They 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 took that and the next thing I know I was in all the plays I was I was in classroom plays that I wasn't even in their class. <laughs> so uh, when when Lean on Me came along, you know, hell, I just did the same thing I did in the school play. You know, I basically you know uh, uh, act the same way, but uh, you know you you got to be under direction and you know everything like that. Working with John Alveston, uh for my first uh, film out the gate, that right there was a blessing in itself. Uh, you know, he directed The Karate Kid and, you know, uh, 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 Michael Schiffer, the writer, you know, wrote Colors prior to writing Lean On Me. So I got to work with some people that was already making history before I came along. So God just really put me in the right hands, you know. Yeah. And, and you did very well. If that wasn't, if that wasn't apparent from my speech. You did very well, and I guess because it sounds like you were able to pretty much be yourself, you came out as passionate, and it came out as a really good role. Like I said, you made it iconic, that role, and I'm not sure that they meant for it to be that iconic, but you did that. Definitely. Um, One thing about that movie that I... One thing I think we can agree about with that movie, because as you said, you know, they were looking for people that were not uh, trained actors. Because Lean On Me had a very, very, very raw aesthetic. It was a very raw intensity because, the, you know, you're dealing, you know, with East Side High, New Jersey. I believe East Orange. Correct me if I'm wrong on the um, location. Uh, Patterson. So, so you're dealing. Patterson. Patterson. All right. Thank you. Yes, Patterson. So you're dealing with a situation where, you know, especially during the 90s and that Big East era, you know, New York, Jersey, Philly, I mean, this is a time where it's really ill out in the street, you know. So that movie encapsulates that whole era of how grimy the streets were. And that movie, you know, captured it from the peril, the pitfall. Oh, yeah. The yeah, the teachers were selling drugs. Yes, I mean, Hell yeah, and the then teachers were selling crack and everything. Yeah, and I mean, but also the triumph of perseverance. What happens when somebody comes in who cares, who actually uplifts, inspires, and leads? Um, all of you did such an outstanding job on that film. I mean, you know, you know, Lady Chinchilla said, you know. Is uh you know a Sandman said you know this was the defining movie. You were in a movie that basically helped define black cinema. It's one of the staples of black cinema. 
and it's yep. the main stage for almost 30 years, 28 years, you know, 29 years later, it's still poignant to this day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I must say, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's a blessing that, you know, you when you could be recognized for your work from people from 8 to 80, uh, that's when, you know, you know you... Really, uh, Red Fox told me that, you know, uh, when we was doing the Royal Yeah, we're going to get to that later, too. We're going to get to yeah, that later, too, because uh, you got a lot more. Yeah, he mentioned to me, man, hey, man. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it is. It's kind of hard for me to talk about Red, man, because that was a, that was a big loss for me. Yeah, man, because we're going to get to that. When's the last time you, um... When's the last time you spoke to Morgan Freeman? When's the last time y'all ever chopped it up? Because, you know, y'all, um, you know, you two chemistry was just crazy and laid on me, you know? It was like, it was like he was, it was way in the way. It was like he, he was bringing you into the acting game. Like, it's like someone right. of a mentor. That's a, and that's exactly what he was. Uh, I spent most of my lunch breaks in, in, uh, in, uh, in Morgan's trailer going over lines and, you know, getting it down packed and him just showing me different different ways to say the same thing but, you know, may add a face expression or this, that, and the other or higher pitch in the voice and get a different reaction out of the same line. Right. You know, I, I, you know, I was, you know, from Newark, so I'm like, nah, this ain't how we talking. I need to change this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Like everybody has said, you know, it's iconic. You fucked around and hit a home run twice because there was some movie, you know, some guy named Tupac. You know, it was he. He was like really bubbling at the time. Ernest Dickinson yeah, some gets guy. it, and you know, that Bishop guy. You know, and and then and then you know, there's this talk about this movie, this this coming out in late 19, around maybe early 91. That they're filming called Juice, and it drops in January 1992. Another classic ring championship of cinema is Forge. Saying, "Oh yeah, you're in that too." How did? What was that like? To I mean, when you come into that, and you're, I mean, you Khalil Kane, you know. Tupac Shakur, I mean, Omar Epps, I mean, Queen Latifah, you know, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, I mean, Special Ed making a cameo, I mean, dude, you were, I mean, how do you get that lucky twice? The the, the, um, the malt liquor and the egg, the malt liquor and the eggs and bacon. (laughs) I mean, uh, (laughs) gotta get it right, buddy. The right people. (laughs) I mean, how, how did the set different? How, how did how were the sets different? Like, how was the environment of both sets? How, jumping from Lean on Me and going to Juice. I'm glad you asked that. That, that. Uh, the sets was totally different because you got a high school set. You go from high right. school to the club. Get you know, most of the time. most of the most of the scenes we were shooting uh, for Juice, you know, was night scenes, club scenes. They got a uh, uh, they got a stand uh fifty first and seventh avenue, you know, and mm-hmm. I mean it was just it was more party, more freedom. My mother wasn't on the set. Still lean on me, my mother had to you know, 
<laughs> like they put me on the set. You know, and all of that. So, you know, once uh once once we did juice, I had them bought my mom a house in North Carolina, so she was down here and I was uh I was up there filming the movie. After I got the movie, I was laying bricks. So I was learning how to lay bricks. That's what it is. Um, now, the thing is, and I think a lot of times people, because you being an accomplished actor, um, I think anybody, anyone who's been in acting knows how important it is to choose your roles. You hit a classic home run with Lean On Me, and then you do it again with Juice. Did you have any idea upon filming did you know that these films were not only going to be great, but these were going to be classics as well? I mean, did you just have that feeling, or did you just kind of you know mm, it? Nah. I mean, you, is it all right? You know, oh, okay. Um, did you? Okay. Okay. I move. No problem. Uh, no, no. But actually, when I did Juice and Lean on Me, I didn't really realize that it, the movies was going to be as big as they were. Right, you know, right. Uh, I just, you know, I, I, I didn't know how it was gonna look. I never done a movie before. Mhm. But yeah, you know, yeah, uh, that because it's like all of y'all was on the come up, so, you know, especially like in Juice, everybody was like on the come up. Like everybody, all you guys were like on the same level at the time. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, pretty much, man. We uh, we uh, pretty much was uh. All getting our feet wet, you know. Um, Lean on me had came out before Juice, mm-hmm. and it kind of like you know sparked and set off my career with a way it gave me something I was known for. I'm 44 years old now. I did it when I was 14, so you know I'm still known for mm-hmm. it. Uh, so like I said, I can't say it enough how much it is a blessing to have you know two movies in the top greatest uh, 20 greatest movies of all times. Like you know a lot of. A lot, of, a lot of people can't say that and the opportunity that I got and the people I was able to work with, you know. And, right. Uh, I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue it was going to come out like I'd be lying if I said, yeah, man, I knew what was I knew it was going to be dope. No, I knew I was working with some great people that made some hell of a movies and, and stuff before, so I knew, okay, well, yeah, I guess this is a movie, Mom. It's not a play. <laughs> Definitely. So you said um, you was um you was you know studying you know and um you had Morgan Freeman mentoring you when you did uh, Lean on Me. What about Juice? Like, was you um who was you studying your lines with in Juice, or was you just studying your lines by yourself? Uh, Juice, man, we had each other because you know basically the way we auditioned for that movie, man, it's like they put us together. You know, okay. they pretty much okay. put us together. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, and, and, and seeing how this, how 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 we acted and coincide with each other in different mm-hmm. groups, we just happened to be the group that clicked. You know, oh, and, so uh, those like different groups from before you guys, like they did put right, they right. We, they was mixing us sets. up and everything, mixing oh. us up, mixing the roles up and everything, and and how how you see it on the screen is how how it basically fell naturally. You know, so is there any other uh, auditions that yeah, we know like, about? Any other people that audition that we know about, like nowadays? Uh, well, what's his name? Donald Faison. He was in the. He was there, but he was in the movie too, though. But he was auditioning. He was auditioning for Steel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was going for the role of Steel. But you know, it's it's okay, interesting. Hey, I, I mean to cut y'all. Hey, I mean to cut okay, y'all no. off, but we. We have a uh, question, believe it or not, and you know I'm about to go in Jay Z mode. I, I gotta say oh. that I got a call from mom. <laughs> you know when you get a call from mom, you know I what that is. You know that, right? You said what now? Yeah, I said I got a call from mom. I'm on Jay Z mode right there, so you know, you know when mom give a call, it's, it's, it's serious right now. And my mom, she got a question for all Jermaine, matter of fact. Okay. Okay. Here she go. It is Mama Madison Birds. Yeah, yeah, lean on me. <laughs> hey, Mama. How you doing? Hey, Mama Madison Birds. How you doing? Hey. I'm doing fine, Steve. I 
enjoy, look, let me tell you something. I enjoy your shows. You are so funny. You ought to be a comedian. Give you a, a stand-up comedy. But let me tell you something. You are funny, and I wish you all the success because every movie you made, I watch and I can't help stop laughing. So you one of my biggest, biggest fans. And I also have my my sons, my other two sons. We all watch them all the time. So keep the good work up, son. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the love. I swear I do. She is she is standing like she yes. Right, and it's genuine, so you know, that's what it's all about. You know, mom That's right, it's genuine. I wouldn't say anything because 'cause I'm Mama right. Edie. I wouldn't say anything to y'all young kids and all that, you know, but keep up and you've been you know, you you've been there a long time. I've been watching you a long time. So I I'm, just I'm want a, to I, I was up, I was shocked this huh? I said I'm gonna keep it up, God willing. That's right, that's right. He's going to be with you all the time, Nancy, because every last one of your shows I've seen is clean. It was clean. (laughs) So, yeah, a little bit of, but, you know, but like I said, it was funny, enjoyable, and um, it was educated and everything. So it was a meaning behind every last one of them. So I just want to give you a shout-out. And I'm going to pass one little thing. I'm going to pass my other son so they can just say, hell, hey, Stills. And so we have talked to a big celebrity. So here go my other son, Nate. Elton Okay. Okay. Owner of Da Vinci. Owner of Da Vinci. Hello. Hello. What's up, man? Hey. Hey, hey man, I, I just have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, my question was, uh, when you was in Juice, right, um, what was in Steel's kitchen? What was what? <laughs> what was in your well, kitchen? I remember uh, when I was watching Juice, and it was a scene where uh, y'all was at the ho- y'all was at the house, and, and you was cooking something. Bacon eggs. It was, it was like bacon eggs or something. I'm trying to figure out what, what is, what's in there. What you saw? Bacon eggs and beer. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was bacon eggs, hot sauce, and beer. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. right Gotta right. get it right, buddy. Breakfast of champions. Hey, y'all give me a second. As soon as I wrap this up, I'll be the only one. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling yeah, you, man. Like, everybody right, remember right. that. Everybody remember that 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 famous breakfast from in Steel's Kitchen. Yeah, definitely. for sure. Huh? And I that think more than anything. Uh, and definitely, definitely, man. Um, I think more than anything, when we watched the movie, because you know you were still a youngin at the time, but to see the maturation, the growth that you came with, because when you watch, when you watch Juice, you know the the dynamics are so so. I mean, it's high drama because we're seeing. Because we're seeing how four friends who are tight, but in certain circumstances get thrown into conflict and ultimately are, you know, the friendship unfortunately is destroyed behind it. But the way you guys played that role was just so, I mean, man, I mean, I don't, I don't think there could, have been a, there could have been another four guys that could have done it the way y'all did. Right, right. It was just a turn of events, you know. The turn of events is so crazy because nobody knew Pac was gonna just, just start going crazy. crazy. Yeah, like, this just went And you know the off. thing is, you know the thing is with the um with the movie, like when, at the beginning when they show like um you know how all four of y'all got up in the morning, the different routines you had. They showed Pac was a little crazy in his in his um segment. Like he's seen his, like his, his, he kept looking at his father. His father done lost it, so it's like, no, his father done lost it. So he felt like he had done nothing else to live for. It was foreshadowing. But it, it was foreshadowing. But it wasn't even, but it wasn't even it, like, it wasn't even a lot of lines if you notice. It was, it was barely any lines within Pac's um segment. It was only like, it was only like a couple of words. You gotta say the dude, bro. Yeah, yeah. How y'all, bro? Good to see you. That's what it do. That's what it do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out here in public. I'm on, a, I'm on the set. I done came on the set, man. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead, man. I, I'm listening. I'm ready for the next question. That kind of brings. 
I was just going to say, that brings to ask, it makes me want to ask the question. You said in the first moment in Lean On Me, it was kind of like acting yourself, just, you know, learning how to say the lines differently. It was more like a character you could relate to. Was Juice a character that you could kind of relate to, or did that kind of bring you out of character to do that part? Uh, really, like, all of them was out of my character, uh, to be honest with you, but... I'm, I was familiar with the characters because, you know, you got somebody in the school, you got a Sam's in the school, you got a Steel in the school. Sam's was more so closer because, you know, I was a young dude, and that's some of the stuff that you see me doing in there. I was doing in elementary school at the same right. time. But still, in, uh, you know, just being in, you know, in that situation and being in that position with a group of guys, with a, you, know, with, you know, like it was a little different. With me growing up, you know, like me and my brother was the dudes everybody wanted to be around. As far as I right. was saying, you know, when we, you know, everybody wanted to do what we was doing. We, it wasn't so much a follower. It still was more of a follower, you know, uh, to a certain extent until he decided that he was going to take the uh, uh, realms and lead, you know, and let everybody know what was going on. And that's where he got his name from, from still. So, you know, yeah, I was able to definitely relate to the character as far as it being, like, you know, parallel to my life. Eh, maybe not so much, you know. You know what's dope, though, about mm-hmm. your catalog is that it showed that you could be very diverse. And, guys, you know, later on in the 90s, you went from the street cinemas into, like, more of the comedies. And one of my favorites right. was Fat Beach. But I was like, man, I want to uh, be yeah. out there, see. <laughs> you, you, you was like an ultimate simp in that movie. <laughs> yeah man, you, yeah man, you. So, went, yeah, what was it like? Work, what was it like working with Brian Hooks? Hey, hey. You said working with who? Brian Hooks. Brian Hooks. Well, who? I didn't hear you. Uh, Brian, Brian Hooks. Brian Hooks. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, the other, um, yeah, the other lead. Brian Hooks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was my that was my dude. It was fun. I, hey, you go. Yes, All right, bro. I see you, man. Hey, it was it was fun. Uh, with Brian because he was he was super green and you know very very uh, appreciative of the opportunity to do Fat Beach where me coming from you know lean on me juice like Fat Beach is, you know this was some old like a couple of cats got together and put a couple million together you know it was like bootleg but I was coming from you know what I'm saying and and then you know I I I stayed professional to a certain extent. When they didn't, when, when they when they stopped being professional, you know what I mean. So Brian got to see a lot of that and be like, man, you about to do what? You know what I'm saying? Man, they gonna kick you out the booth. Oh well, they just kick me out the booth. What's up, my son? How you doing, man? Hey, sorry, you got lost, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. All right, for sure, man. I'm trying to get wrap this interview up, man. I'll be right in it. Yeah, but uh, I used to have fun with Brian, like just on the strip of that. You know, and, uh, you know, him being green, you know, to the fact that, you know, certain things that, you know, are supposed to happen while you focusing on your lines and making sure that you bringing this character across, doing what you're getting paid to do, there's certain things you shouldn't have to worry about while you're on set. So, you know, right. uh, but he took, he took smooth off after that. You know, I, I talk to him now, you know. I always, I always been the... The edgy one, you know. I'm like, um, I, I, that's why I always say, man, I'm a mother's child, little fat kid from Newark, man. Still <laughs> <laughs> talk, man, because I, cause I was gonna say this too. I'm, I was gonna say this too in regards to that movie. I'm still looking for the main chick that you was crushing on, man. I was looking for her IG pages and Twitter. I can't find Word. this chick, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still looking for it too. I'm still looking for it too. <laughs> It's you know what it is about like, I like Fat Beats because like you threw people for a loop because you know we just came off of you know watching Juice and everything and when you, you know, it's like you you just went like it was like out of the box when it comes to what we was used to when it came to you know how you acted in movies but it was like you you, you took a softer tone like did you like when you got when they hit you with that script did you Think, did you think twice about it? Do you think like, huh, I don't they know, because... They said they want to speak to you before they... All right. You said what now? Yeah, I was saying that, because, you know... Think... There you go. What's 
Yeah, like, yeah, like basically, because you know, you you did um, you know, you did lean on me, you did juice. It was like yeah, your character was a little more like a little more edgier. You know what I'm saying? Right. You still there? You still there? Still like still talking yeah, to like yeah, you talking yeah. to like five different people right now. Yeah, you with yeah. us? You with us? Yeah, it's just cracking where I'm at right now, man. I can't yeah, stop my life. working and doing an interview. <laughs> that's, 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 oh, no, that man, multi talented. Yeah. yeah. Ain't, no, ain't no wrong with that. But I was I was asking like basically like um when you got handed the script Fat Beach like how did you how did how did it feel towards you because you did other roles and like the the role the Fat Beach role was like out of the box. Yeah man, how y'all doing? Once again man. Yeah, he's still he's still he's he's all over the place. Yeah, he'll get back to it. But I'm still gonna look for that chick though, man. For real, I gotta look I gotta look through those credits. Much y'all let us know. Okay. God bless you. Alright. Yo, let okay. them know you're on Off the Cuff Radio too. Let people let them know. Let them know you're on Off the Cuff Radio, man. I'm gone now. They done pulled off, man. They they they, they lost the sun right now on the motorcycle, so they ain't really tripping on Off the Cuff Radio or none of that right now. <laughs> Yeah, speaking uh, of that, I uh, see that you um like if people check your Instagram page or whatever, you, like you into motorcycles and stuff. Yeah, have you always been into motorcycles? Yeah, um, uh, you know I got turned out of California, man. When I spent that time out there in California, man, it just it just opened up a whole another world for me that you know I used to look at as you know cornball stuff. See my pops on this Harley and all that. That's some old man stuff. I ain't got time for that. You know, uh, and messed around, and he messed around and took me on the set, and it was curtains after that. Once I got a bike, it was it was over with. Now, you know, I said, well, hell, I got to jump out there and, uh, you know, do my do my thing, have my little fun with it, and I've been doing it now for the last going on four years. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, now, so, uh, now we had a fallen biker to go down. Uh, a couple of days ago out here. So, you know, I was on my way to the little thing they had for him, you know, downtown Durham, North Carolina, you know, just to, you oh, know, pay my respects. So we all out here, and you never know it could be you. I done lost a lot of, uh, 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 I ain't going to say a lot, but I done lost a few partners out here on these two wheels and stuff. Mm. So you never know. Man, you know, that makes us appreciate you more for joining us tonight, you know, given the fact That's that, you know, these certain it. circumstances, you know, so we definitely appreciate you joining us. Oh, definitely yeah, send yeah, our yeah. condolences. Yeah, man, so I mean, so I mean, in terms of, uh, so taking it back a little bit, so your time on the royal family that you did with Red Fox, you know, and unfortunately, you know, he passed away before that show really got its uh, footing. And you were with Lorenz Tate as well. Um, and, you know, I mean, you know, how, what was that like to work with Red for that time that you did? I'm sorry, man. They had this motorcycle running. I, I didn't hear the last part. You, you, it, it's, it all, it's, all, it's all good. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah, um, about uh, Red Fox. Yeah, the royal okay. family. You know, for that time you were there, and, and uh, you know, what was that like? Because we know it was on CBS. You know, it had a you know few episodes before, unfortunately, you know, Red passed away. So right, um, right, right. You know, so uh, really but uh, Fox, hey, look, working with Red Fox, man, that that was that was off the chain because you know I used to always watch him with my parents. You know, what I'm saying with the Sanford and the Son. You know, right. always huh. see him on TV, so I knew exactly who he was. Uh, that whole experience was different for me because I got to, you know, like that was when I I got to deal with Hollywood Boulevard and all of that because where they had me staying at. I messed around. Mm-hmm. I was on Hollywood Boulevard. The police came from every which way and like kind of like locked me down. Like, yeah, what's going on? I'm like, what's going on? You know, I'm, I'm from Newark. I got my jeans, my Tim's on, the hoodie. You know, just a regular New York nigga shit. You know, so they, they ran down on me. Come to find out, it's the dude that fit my description. Just wait the girl in the elevator. You know, a few bitches. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> so I got Man, all kinds that's... of policies from them. I was going through that. Man, me and Red used to be on the set chilling. When I say chilling, like, you know, uh, as far as on movie set, television set, 
you have you got more. It's a hurry up and wait situation. You're doing more right. waiting than you are working. You don't get tired from right. work. You get tired from waiting. Waiting around right. to do your thing. So, you know, in that wait time, man, Red would have him. Man, have you in tears. We sitting back, you know, uh, being men. You know, I was 17. Uh, Lorenz Tate, Omar Gooding. Uh, uh, they was they was of an age where they still had their guardians. You know, Lorenz had his brothers with him on set, and I don't remember exactly right. who was with uh, Omar. It might have been his mother, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, I was the loose cannon. I'm you know 17. I done did a couple of them. I'm like, yeah, I'm out here in Cali. So you know, I was red. I'm messing with uh, uh, Eddie. Uh, it was his show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. and speaking of that show, I just talked to. The, uh, the uh the Clint today, man. He was one of the writers and producers of the show, man. He got some things in the making. Yeah, but that was a hell of an experience, man. Just working on that show and you know, uh I got the I got to know the friends take, you know, real good from that show, man. He 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 come from real good stock, him and his brothers, they 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 good people. Omar good people. You know, um yep. Hopefully, I have a project coming up with me and Omar get to work again. I'm not sure. I got a phone call on it. I don't know how real it is, but we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, but you, but to understand you and you're telling us all of this, your career has your career has intersected with legends and distinguished alumni because, of course, Omar and Lawrence will go on to great things. I mean, you figure that show right. is what, from 91 to 92 with the royal family, and, you know, Lawrence will go on to do, you know, this surprise hit, well, you know, this Minister well, Society. Minister Society, right. Yeah, right. And, but he had also appeared on Family Matters as an episode as a bully, you know, before, uh, a, couple of, a, year, a couple of years earlier. Yeah, the Fresh yeah, yeah, Prince as well. The Fresh Prince, he was Will Smith's protege. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know, you all of y'all were just <laughs> like, you know, we're just watching all of you during this time, and all of you were really coming into your own as, you know, as established actors. And, you know, you all go on to, I mean, next, how does that I feel was to just... Because I was in St. Louis. Hey, man, they, I was in St. Louis. Man, let me finish this interview, man. I got to talk to you for a minute, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah That's respect, Mike. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I be doing shit like this. <laughs> I like you talking about some good grain while he's talking, too, though. I'm going to leave that alone. My bad. Yeah, yeah my man. Bad. Hey, look. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, but it's on radio. You hey, never man, know what man. goes on here. Right, right. And that's why I appreciate y'all having me on the show and everything. That's why I said I was going to do the show because I like how, you know, I've I seen a couple of y'all things. Y'all just raw with it, man. Like, y'all not scripted with it. It ain't no hocus pocus or none of that. Like y'all said when y'all was talking about the, uh, you know, the victims in Florida, and I want to, you know, definitely give my condolences to them and, you know, uh, 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 the families you know, that lost uh, loved ones, the ones, the families that didn't lose the loved ones, that just had to deal with the, 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 the fright of my child being ah. stupid. It's a, it's a mass yeah. shooter on the loose. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 it, it, friends and everything goes out, you know, and I think on, on, on that subject, man, you know, a lot of times, like, uh, like you said, we got to pay attention to what people say. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. A lot of times people say what they mean and mean what they say. So, you know, just because you ain't used to hearing it or you feel like, oh, they don't mean that. They just talking. They just mad. That don't mean they're not going to do it. And another thing I want to speak out on that yeah. is see, see. See. On, 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 on the real side, see, when, 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 when drugs and guns was getting into the inner city schools, mm-hmm. they quickly put up metal detectors. They made zones and everything where you can't have drugs in a certain oh. zone, a certain amount of feet of the school. They did all of that when it was up. Yeah. But those mass shootings. I'm glad. I was, I was going to allude to that, too. I, I was definitely going to allude to that. I'm glad you run that up. Keep on going. They, they're happening in the perfect schools where you, where you would think it even more safer, you know, but you have to realize, you know, the more money, the more access. These kids have more ah. access. Firearms and 
you know, you, you go to a to get whatever you need. One of these, uh, one of these uh, 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 um, not even high school, but middle school kids, you know. Uh, yep. uh, so it, it's not it's not so much as like, you know, uh, it, 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 it's the urban areas that's the problem. We need the same tactic that we're using in the urban areas throughout the whole school because all of them kids that need to be, 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 be protected. But at the end of the day, Fact. oh, no, they're not animals. We can't do that. We can't, we can't put up metal detectors at the school. That's going to make us look, you know, uncivilized and this, that, and the other. But it's okay to happen in the hood. But, you know, I'm in a position where I can say what I want. Cause, you know what I mean? It is what it is with me. I get my own. Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, so they turn the well, you make, such, you make such a valid point, my dude. Like, you make such a valid point. Like, when it, came, like, when it comes to the hood or whatever, if they got metal detectors, they got actual cops. Not security guards. They have like actual cops, armed cops, right. doing security and, and, and all that stuff. That's time after time. You know, and and another thing, I want to you know give all you know uh 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 uh, uh praises uh 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 and mad support to all the women that done been through all of the sexual you know uh uh abuse and stuff like that from these different men and um. and, 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 and different positions. Because they're trying to get somewhere, but this shit been going on for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, every day you turn to the news, you know, when it was Bill Cosby, they had him plastered on the news every time you look up Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby. Nah. Another one jumped up, another one jumped up. All these other days, you don't even hear about it on the news no more. What happened to oh, the kid? Really? What happened to the situation? You see what I'm saying? Now, see, they shit is being exposed. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. They stuff really being exposed now, you know, and if you really sit back and watch the the news that they control, if you really look through the shit, it's telling you the story, to trust me, yeah. being there, the rest of them, oh, they want to tell you the real, you know what I'm saying, they want to tell you the real huh. about it in government, you know, but I just yeah. wanted to say that, man, just to, you know, speak on some No, it's okay, it's okay. And yeah. my accomplishment yeah. for what's going on in the world today that my people is dealing with. You know what I'm saying? That's right. right. So, yeah, when, when, when it comes Can to I that, say, man, yeah, man. I just want to ask what you were saying. Because the simple fact that, like you were saying, they're making, and they like to publicize the black problem until they have all evidence that it's not just a black problem or a hood problem. And so you are, because, and number one, it's not just a Hollywood problem either. That happens in the private sector more than people know. I've been through it myself. It's how we deal with it. And at the end of the day, when you don't have the money, the resources, or if you don't have the resources like the corporation has the resources to combat it, then you're stuck dealing with it or moving on to a different uh, line of work or a different job. So that is always a problem. It's going to be a problem until everybody can stand up and fight equally. And just to go back to what you were saying about the school, you also have to remember that not only do the the suburban kids with more money have a lot more access to the guns and stuff, they're putting a different kind of drug in their body half the time. And those drugs that they're putting in their body allow them, and with no supervision and no one to talk to, because half of their parents are gone, they have, you know, no, no one to really talk to. The, the drugs and, and people that they're around, other kids doing the same drugs or people that are ridiculing them for whatever reason, they are thinking a lot of different ways. And sometimes these mad shoes come out of frustration and out of just simply knowing to talk to and these drugs talking to them for the parents. And so Can in I the movie, in too. Can I jump in on that? You're absolutely of right. But it's fixed that. It goes deeper than that. It goes to them same kids that you talk and hang around these same kids. And they seeing their other little white little friends going in churches, killing up everybody. And on their way to jail, yep. they get stopped at, 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 at McDonald's and shit like that. And then when a black person get out the car or get pulled over, they get killed. Yeah, they see that type of shit. Yep. It's like, you, we could do this to get away with it. Now this shit happened in Florida. Mm-hmm. You got the president. Now he wants to talk about a mental illness. No, it's fucking gun control, yep. asshole. And it's basically it's terrorism. It is, it is, it's terrorism. It's always an excuse on why they did the shit. When we do some shit, we animals, we locked up, we look at the baddest on the motherfucking We way. smoke weed. Yeah. All of that yeah. shit. We Savages. We don't fucking fools and no shit like that. We ain't doing that Thank type of shit. But see, they don't want to hear it. Like they running in their fucking car right now. Because I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear <laughs> this shit, but it's real shit. 
when it comes you know, to and it's, it's, it's a reason and it's, it's definitely a fucking medical reason. A black motherfucker mm-hmm. is oh, yeah. animal. Let's lock him up for the rest of his life if we can't put him in a fucking chair. And anybody associated nah. with him. And, and it's a very and, 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 and that's a very exposed. all that shit worrying about your career. So you gonna sit the fuck out of here, man. All right, man, y'all got me yeah. busted, man. I was good, too. We got it. I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. It's a very... Fuck that, yo. Hey, hey, let it... Yeah, that's what... Hey, let it all out. Let it all hey, out, B. That's, about that's, about these that's why you have. There's no scripts around here, B. You know... That's why you have. Let that shit out. Spit that fire. You know, I was the kid that didn't lean on me. I took that little fame... And I wasn't about going to sign autographs. I went down to City Hall and made some relationships and let these motherfuckers know, look, all of us don't play basketball. Because so y'all coming in the neighborhood throwing up some basketball hoops, thinking that's going to keep us out of trouble and all that. I'm a little fat kid. I don't play basketball. What's that going to do for me? I'm looking to break in somebody's shit. How you going to stop me from doing that? Next thing you know, I'm getting the key to the city to like a record of the and all of that. And now they're doing different things in the neighborhood. And that's they start coming with the more of the jungle gyms and they start promoting the sports and different sports and stuff like that. I'm like, man, you know, but I always, I've I never been afraid to speak out because, you know, I'm always one like, okay, well, what, what, what can happen? You know what I'm saying? You know, I got my ass beat. Up because it's like, oh, well, what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to say I'm sick. Oh, and I've been like yep. that all my life, and I don't mean no hard, man, but it's just how I feel, and I don't feel like, you know, I have to I have to hold that in because yeah, I done accomplished yeah. some things in life and this, that, and the other. Well, what about my people that don't have a voice? That want to huh. say the same thing, but everybody ain't got no mic, and they probably, they could probably say it better than I can. <laughs> That's so real. I, I love that you said that. That's real. You know, and it's a very and it's a very difficult subject to tackle in terms of what we're dealing with from the you know from our children, black and white, because you know they talk about how we do this as being black people, but I'm like y'all cut educate y'all cut funding for education in the inner city. You don't give us resources, you know, and <laughs> and when it comes to you know when it comes to uh, mental illness, I'm like we've been fighting this for years that there's been stuff going on. You know, with autism, with, you know, schizophrenia, with bipolar disorder, that are all have very real circumstances in term well, they have very real consequences in their um in terms of what happens when those behaviors explode. But everybody wants to brush it under the rug and act like they, they everybody gets shot when something like this happens. And I'm like, that boy already had issues prior to he right. even articulated a threat, and nobody did anything. So what? You thought that he just wasn't going to do it, and he basically, he was killing animals. He was, They said from what he was uh, on his Facebook and his social media pages that he was making bigoted comments. He was holding up dead animals he killed, and y'all still don't think this is a problem. He turned the blind eye to it. And I think, and I think if it was a, the and I honestly it. think if it was a black dude, I honestly think if it was a black dude, it would have been on a problem. They would have ran those oh, dudes down. They would have been the SWAT team, the army. Got the the exactly. They would have been a minority report style. Yeah, but I mean, when you see signs, you have to act on it. And it don't matter. You know, and in the hood, too, um, and I'm going to go Everybody there. Left. We have we have to. And I got to go there, too, because in the hood, we have to watch out for a lot of us because black people tend to brush mental illness off like it's not nothing. Like a lot of these guys, it's just, no, some of these dudes, especially coming from the crack era with some of these dudes being born, a lot of these heads out here that got in the street and started wilding, these guys got mental issues that were not addressed. And the problem mm-hmm. is, for us, we don't get that same level of, we don't get the same. I will put it like this, and I'm and I'm and I may get a and, I'm, and, I, and it may get controversial when I say this, but I'm gonna say it. Black people tend to act like a lot of times that it doesn't affect us, and it does. I was in the school right. system, so I taught kids right. that had that were diagnosed with, right. you know, um, you know, with right. these things. And no matter the child, that. no matter the color, 
you have to catch this early because but the thing is usually when we get caught with something in terms of when it's a violent crime, they just look at us as we were just bad. No, there was a lot of situations in an upbringing and then undiagnosed issues that were there that were not spoken on before we got there. But now the whole solution is to just throw us in a cage and we didn't get the help we needed before it came to that. You know, but yep. the system across the board <laughs> this isn't about black or this is this this is about addressing issues of where you're dealing with people who have the potential to be who are time bombs that are going to go off and if there is not an intervention on it to address it when you see a child, no matter what, acting up in school, if they're crazy, if they're threatening teachers, if they hurting other students, you deal with it then. You don't wait and hope it goes away. You deal with it. And I know certain schools have their rules. I know, I know every district, because I, I was in it, so I know how this works. They get a report card from downtown about how they deal with these situations. Hold on one second. And see, that, well, that goes to something. It's a huge thing. I'm going to switch the subject up or whatever, man. But uh, so I got uh, my boot kids. I'm about to start shooting that. Uh, I'm uh, looking at Atlanta to start shooting a uh, trail on that. I got a couple of other projects in the making that's not really locked in. But uh, ever since uh, my last situation, I started uh, Day Hop Films. And it's coming along pretty good. Uh, my writer uh, passed away month ago so uh and you know his likeness we, we're gonna get this one done or whatever and i got some uh pretty pretty cool uh people that's uh coming aboard with me on the project that y'all be familiar with but i'm not gonna put it out and uh till we uh that's what's up i'm sorry to hear that but you know definitely hope that comes, phone, comes out there if my phone there. set off my battery is about to die Okay, okay. Oh, man. So before your battery yeah. die, you know, we got to ask you also, because, you know, we you know, we, we, we touched on everything from Lean On Me, Juice, Fat Beach. You know, we got to touch on the Wayans Brothers, what you played the Dupree character. Now, how was it like working with the Wayans Brothers? Man, my jaw's hurting every day because these niggas are clowns. That's all they do all day. <laughs> Clown. Clown. Everything is a joke, and they silly. You know, it's the difference of being funny just being a silly. So they're going to do some silly shit that you ain't especially that Marlon. But uh, I love those cats, man. Yeah, around that time, Marlon was like, Marlon was on fire. He was considered one of the funniest of, of one of the funniest of, of on TV. Especially when, when it came compared to the Wayans. Like, around that time, he, he was always considered the funniest Wayans. Yeah, Marlon. Hey, before you go... Me and Marlon was a little excited because, you know, like, after the set, you know, we go by the crib. Marlon was in the rap shit. I was in the rap shit. We had the studio at the crib. Sometimes we'd do that or whatever, man. Them were some good brothers. I ain't got nothing bad to say about them, man. You know, they uh, took care of me, man. I love for them. <laughs> I, I like got projects, but, hey, man, you know, I changed my numbers every now and then. So, you know, maybe they had a hard time. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> remember, have, remember have, um, the the episode. I, well, I just want to ask him one more thing. Remember that episode when um this dude Marlon wish wish he wasn't ever born, and then everything was like a paradox, and you ended up being the bodybuilder of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh 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 right. <laughs> okay, look, I got two quick questions, and they only have one word answer. One, is there any name that you are tired of being called as far as Steel, Sam's, or any character? And the second one is, do we look forward to you, like, producing and writing movies under your your movie label? Yes. Uh, plan on producing them and doing some directing as well uh, with the help okay. of the of uh, Ernest Dickinson uh, that directed you. So, okay. You know, Ernest is okay. under right now. So, you know, I'm going to make sure that... Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a try. I'm a try to make history, but you know it's hard to try to make history. You just gotta do it, and it just gotta it just gotta do it. You know what I mean? You just gotta. It'll do be it. the second so, time you're making history. 
well, the second yeah. wing, you're making history because you already made history as an actor. So the director and the producer, they're coming up. I, I believe in you. And yeah, as far as the second act. What about the first? What about the first question? Do you all get ever get tired of anybody calling you Sam's or Steel or? Nah, hell no. Nah. You know, cause uh, it's a lot of times I see out with you know other cats that they got work that I be feeling like be more famous than me, but. You know, everybody else yo, still, yo, saying like I can't get away from it. I could put on shades. I don't grew hair on my face. I, I mean, not that I'm trying to get away from, it, but you know, it's like you know, I mean, I'm 44 now. You know, I've been going through that since I was 13, 14, and I love every bit of it. But you know, at the end of the day, I don't go out the door seeking that. I still live a real lifestyle. You know, I got white kids, all of that. You know, uh, I like to come like everybody else do. So you know, I. I got real shit to take out here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, but it, it's, it's great to hear you. It's great to hear you say that because a lot of people, like with Kim Fields, <laughs> and we love Kim Fields, but Kim Fields hated being called Tootie. You know, from the facts of life. You know, because her thing was she wanted to, you know, separate herself <laughs> from that. You know, but well, um, you, you got to try to make yourself, you know, your name like a household word. When you say Jamie Foxx, you know the face. Sometimes you say Jermaine Hopkins. If you don't say fans or still, a person might not right. know what you're talking about. But it's all good. I mean, that's, that's you know, that was a plan. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't know who I was. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. From the book, mm-hmm. off the block, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know who I was if it wasn't for that. So people calling me that, hey, they, they might not know my name. So I take it off. And y'all have either that, that either they, they, they know you from that or they know you from or they know you from East Side High. Bring can you yeah. sing that from word to word? Brings forth <laughs> for loyalty. Do people come up and sing that to you? Do people come like stand in your presence and just start singing or anything? Oh, they, stupid? They got a bunch they, of they, weird people like it. They do all that shit. <laughs> they look at my faces and they're like, oh. <laughs> let me. This ain't Sam to you, Daddy. He 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 ain't that he ain't that dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like I say, it's all good, man. I don't, you know, I really trip on people, man, because you know, one one thing I learned uh, with being famous from a young age until now is, man, you can't control how people gonna come at you. You are gonna have people that recognize you and don't say nothing. You are gonna have people that recognize you and try to do everything they can to hold their composure. You got people that might recognize you like hell with the composure. I love this cat. And, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you got people that gonna say some off the wall shit, but don't mean no harm. But Sam, let me hear that cool song, Sam. Right, let me hear that cool that, song, Sam. That. That's just telling me you remember something that I did. So you know it's all good because you know you got cats that go in the mall and spend thousands of dollars just for a motherfucker to recognize. You know what I'm saying? That's hey, true. That. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They finished Sounds diamond. like something Bow Wow would do. Face the biggest diamond. I, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't find a diamond that shine brighter than my face. You know, and that's the that's best deep the right there. That's you know, yo, that's the church right there. I didn't ask for it. It's, 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 it's the cards I was dealt, so I'm running with it. Well, yo, I like that, that attitude. That's what you say. That's a humble attitude. Yeah, I like what you said too. <laughs> For real. And my whole thing, man. Before we, before we go, or the battery die, man, like, I, you know, y'all don't see me in a lot of movies, back to back, you know, Instagram ain't blowed up, like, I don't really, I don't really take that, I mean, it, when I say, like, my career, or my life is a blessing, like, I really mean that, like, I'm not the pastor of the church, the deacon, or none of that, I'm very familiar with it, you know, but my life, it, it can only be him. You know, I'm standing out here so everybody leave on their bike. They're going to they gonna burn up. But my whole thing is about just like that, being an inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's more than about being an inspiration and inspiring those that the, 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 that that less likely to be inspired. Inspired just on the strength of seeing sure. me. Be shaking their hand, taking a picture. Oh, man, that nigga took a picture with me, man. Word. Now, it, that, that, you never know what that does for people. And I done seen people come back to me years later, man. You never know how you touch me, man, just taking that moment out and hollering at me, man, because I was going through X, Y, and Z, da-da-da-da-da. You know, so right. my, thing, 
it's, it's more about being an inspiration than being a star. I can give a shit about being a star. I can care less about being a celebrity. I can care less about being recognized. Let me be an inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Let me be an inspiration. Let me inspire people to, to do great things. You know what I'm saying? Pac said, let me spark the mind that do great things. I may not do it, but let me take something that spark the mind to do it. You know, and that's, that's, my, uh-huh. motivation. that's my motivation. When I'm out in public like I am right now, like, you know, a lot of cats, they do sit in their little thing, do their little interview and all. Man, hell with that, man. This, this is what keeps me going. You know, these same people around, these same people in public that recognize me while I'm doing an interview with y'all, I'm taking pictures and all of that. With people. Hey, man, glad to meet you, man. Glad you out here. Glad you came out. Taking five seconds to just, you know, give my condolences to a family that was lost. See, that shit means something to me. You see what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Now if you want to call me a celebrity or a star or whatever, now I'm using it to good use because there's no, no telling how they may feel after that. Because you don't know just uh-huh. like those boys other that got on the line. You never know how people feel about you or how you touch them from something they see. You seen them doing a the movie. We all like that. With I got movies I done seen, and if I was to meet the actors and shit, when I met Goldie from the goddamn old, when we did How to Be a Player, I'm, I'm, I was in heaven. I'm like, you know, this is <laughs> God to me. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, Max Julian was God to me on, on How to Be a Player. Like, Nigga, I'm following this nigga running like I'm listening to everything. Goldie, you know, you know, so, so, you know, if that to me, that's 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 more so what it's about. You know, God bless me to get the roles. I didn't have to jump through no hurdles, do nothing. I went and audition in an open call audition where it was over two thousand kids out there. So that was for mm. me. He has something mm. for you. You don't that have was to definitely go for you. and spend a thousand dollars in a beauty supply store trying to make yourself look like somebody you not. Get around people <laughs> trying to be more than what you are. You don't have to do any of that because when it's for you, no one can deny you of it. It's gonna happen. So I don't have to be out here chasing agents down and chasing this movie down and chasing that one down. Like I'm on social media as Jermaine Hopkins. If you really trying to get at me, God damn, I ain't got but so many followers and shit. You know, I'm going to see all my messages and shit. It ain't like I got a million <laughs> followers. So I'm going to have that many messages. If you're really trying to get at me, you know what hell. He ain't dealing with no agent right now. Can't get in the room just sad. Well, boom, hit me on this. So all that, yeah, we've been trying to get in touch. Man, that's bullshit. I'm here. And if uh, you don't know how to get in touch with me, word call them because they damn sure do. <laughs> like no, speaking of that, that's cause, real. Cause speaking of that, because I thought like, cause you know, cause we were chopping it up from before, you know, what I'm saying on on the gram or whatever, and then as the show was coming close, like like when Wednesday came, and I was trying to reach you, and then you see my messages, and he wasn't getting back at me. I'm like, oh shit, this this motherfucker done turned Hollywood on on a, on a nigga real quick. Nah, he was turned nah, Hollywood out of nowhere. I'm like, that, I'm like, uh, I'm like, yo, he gonna flake on us, yo. He gonna flake on this. Is that oh, bullshit? Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to keep it 100 with you What I didn't want to do Is I didn't want to say yeah And then check y'all out And then like oh nah uh uh-uh. uh You know what I mean And then like I, now I got to tell you no Now I got to do it because I done told you yeah See all I got is my word You know what I'm saying right. So if I done told you yeah You could have had the wackest show on the planet If I told you yeah I'm going to do it Then I already committed to it You know what I'm saying right. Ain't no turn back You didn't do nothing you know what I'm saying for me to yeah. be then going. So you know that 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 should uh, uh, haunt me for the rest of my damn life. You know, so I had to I had to you know make a call to my people and let them know what I was doing, and then get a call oh. back. Like, oh, but yeah, go ahead. You know that's that's good to go. And that's when I gave you the yes, shot you the number, and all of that shit. So I don't commit to something that I end up not doing. I'm just 100 with it. I ain't gonna shoot that's you no appreciate move. it. You know, and then knowing That's everything awesome, that you, you're doing right now, where you at, we definitely appreciate your time because I know you you could have cut it short a long time ago, but you definitely stayed well, got, on the on, on the side yeah, with us. So we have brothers standing outside the joint. They been been being patient and shit, waiting for me before we go inside. But it's all good, man, because you know everything happens for a reason. I'm I'm blessed that somebody want to talk to me. Although you know I I do a lot of interviews and it's all good, but. 
hey, I, I, I don't take one less than the other one because you never know which one you might do that's going to spark that ear that might say, you know what, damn, I forgot about that guy. Hey, man, you know, let's bring him in this next Batman flick. You never fucking know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm Who would you want to cast? Who would you want to cast as in a new Batman flick? Who would you want to be? Who would I want to be in Batman? Yeah. Robin. Robin. It's not Batman. <laughs> I'm not trying to be Batman. You know what I mean? But it's not Batman. Yeah, because I see, cause I see you slimming you know? down now. You know, people don't, people ain't noticed, like, you know, you've been slimming down, you know, these past few years oh, they've or whatever. Been noticed. Like you. They've been noticing. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it all the time. You hear that, Hollywood? My dude, I have, I have Hopkins, been, uh, he ready. He ready for those action movie roles. Have him at the oh, new you Triple know, X. You know, like Fast and Furious ten. You know one thing about the Fast and Furious. Is, is, yeah, that, you see, that's Neil Moritz. That's the producer of Juice. I should have been in all of that shit, but you know it is. Yeah, it get is. out of here. You know it is what it is, but you know. Uh, yeah, that's my man, Neil and them man. They 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 gave me a shot. I had got shot when I auditioned for Juice, you know, and mm. uh, when I got the role and shit uh, and came up there, I had got a skin graft. I told him I got hurt playing football. Man, these motherfuckers called a doctor, all of that. <laughs> I was like, man. You know what I mean? I never knew that. Everybody, like, Jermaine, wait a minute. You said you had a sprained ankle, but your doctor said, get it. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I said, a skin graft? What is that? <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, man, I'm the wrong patient, man. I don't know what the hell this skin graft is. I was like, that must be the wrong patient and shit, man. You know, and uh, and I wind up having to uh, cop to an And it's like, okay, man. man well, 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 can you still do the running scene? God damn it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, it ain't no problem. By the time we get to those shots, I'll be healed up. They're the first fucking shots, Jermaine. You know, I'm like, well, look, Neil, hey, man, we're going to be good. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was my interview. You know, that's why I say when something is for you, everything was working against me. You know what I mean? But when something is for you, it's for you. You know? But, uh, hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all time. Appreciate you on there. Hey, what's going on, man? What's going hey, on? we appreciate <laughs> you. You so time, me, man. I'm asking about you. Hey, let me finish this interview up, man. Okay. Well, you ain't about to leave, are you? Hold up, man. Don't and that's what you call off the cuff, nigga. We do. We. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When we do interviews, yeah, we do interviews. Guys. You never know what's going down. That's what live TV is all about. Live radio. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. This is live we, just, we just let them. We just let them. We, we, hey, we let you go since you know you got um because you're about to go pay your respects and all <laughs> to your friend. So you know we might as well let you go. You know we don't want to hold you for too long. You know you got stuff to do. We definitely appreciate you, appreciate you chopping it up with us. You know. Hey, yeah, I appreciate it. Y'all stay in touch with me, man, and uh. You know, uh, the things that I'm doing, like when I'm do- doing uh, uh, tears and everything, man, keep y'all abreast of it. You know, maybe y'all can come down to the set, you know, get some live footage and shit, uh, uh, live interviews and all of that, man. But stay in touch with me, man. I uh, I, I really dig talking to y'all. I thought I was going to have to do that. brother. The battery stayed going. That's why I tell you, man. God is good. Definitely. And we would love to Definitely. have you back when you just tell us more about your experiences in Hollywood. You know, just tell us about everything you dealt with in more detail, man, because there's still so much that we got to talk about in terms of, you know, yeah. just, you know, how, you know, because there's, because there, you heard the joke that 80% of the actors in Hollywood don't work because there's so many. So there's just, I know you could just tell us some stories about, you know, what it takes getting roles, you know, about how it goes into making movies, just, yeah, How we well, see what so I many. Yeah. What I can tell you real quick mm-hmm. is if you if you look at what's happening in the media with everybody being exposed, all of the mm-hmm. big wigs and everything, with the big names that's calling the shots, I think that says a lot for why you don't see everybody, you know, in position. 
You know, uh, that's why you don't have as many actors working. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? What's up, man? I'm good. Right, right. Mm. Hey, yeah. What's going on, man? Yeah, that's why you there don't you have as many because, you know, you got a lot of jokers just like me. That's like Samuel. You know what I mean? And I can't say what they doing or whatever, but one thing I always respect about Sam and Denzel and Morgan, they men. You know, uh, even the uh, – uh, 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 Who are you thinking of? Red Fox. You're right, right. Uh, what's my man's name? That just got, well, he just got a comedian. A hell of a comedian. I can't believe I can't. I, I can't forget. I'm forgetting his name. What was he in? What was he in? <laughs> yeah, what movies was he in? Who became, what the fuck he do? Uh, not to, he do, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Hell. He did an uh, episode have a, with us on the Wayne's Brothers. He did an episode with us on the Wayne's Brothers and the gang of fucking Man. Oh, Bernie Mac. Nice Bernie Mac. You Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac. Damn, I'm tripping. And that was my dude. He was trying to teach me how to play golf. You know what I mean? That, but, yo, uh, that episode was one of the funniest. He said, my name's Shank. My name ain't Oliver. <laughs> my name is Shank. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I'm out of here. I'm about to go get me a facial. You said a facial? Shut up, damn it. <laughs> yeah, they got me wanting to go man. back and check that out after the show. They better start putting, oh, yeah. those, putting the Wayne Brothers joints on um, Netflix by then. Most likely they might put it on Hulu. Yeah, I got to catch up I think they that. put it on Hulu. Yeah, I think I think we lost. I think we all lost still. I think his phone finally died. Man, but that dude gave us life though with that phone. Di- but I mean, even with the phone died, he gave us life, man. Because that dude has some gems, man. I mean, yeah, you know, man. What's gonna stick with What's gonna stick with me?